Hi, in this set of videos, we're going to solve some problems about sampling distribution. As explained in the lessons videos, sampling distribution is nothing but like any other distribution that we have learned earlier. Um, it represents the distribution, though, about uh, uh, the, the mean of, of, uh, of a sample. Okay, or the proportion or the mean of a proportion uh, of a sample or the mean of uh, or the difference between the means of two samples um, that we draw from two different populations. Okay, so um, you, will, you will notice that when we solve the problems uh, that once we... Um, find the parameters of that variable. For example, let's talk about X bar. Okay, once we find uh, the mean of the X bar distribution, which is the sampling distribution and the standard deviation, then we reach a stage where we are simply solving a, or we are answering question about the probability of a variable being within a certain range and this variable has a normal distribution. And this is something that you have already uh, learned how to do. In previous topic right so uh, I'm sure that you'll find these problems um, easy to solve but what's very important is focus on the first part of every problem all right uh, which is how to find the parameters of the distribution okay so let's get started so in this problem we are given that uh, the height of a North American woman are normally distributed with a mean of 64 inches and a standard deviation of 2 inches. Okay, so that's the standard deviation and this is the mean. Remember, this is the population. All right, so what's the probability that a randomly selected woman is taller than 66 inches? As usual, we agreed to do that, that let's define our variable so that we can then uh, build our probability statements in the terms of this variable. So we'll call it X, for example. You can call it whatever you want. X is the height of the North American woman. So X is our variable, right? We are not uh, uh, talking yet about um, drawing a sample. So the question is given here. We can now convert it into um, notations of X and probabilities. So uh, first, let's. Uh, what do we know about X? We were given that uh, they are normally distributed, right? And that allows me then to use that notation so that X is normally distributed. And this is the mean, this is the standard deviation. Remember, a normal distribution has two parameters, the mean and standard deviation. And now we are ready. So the question is P of X greater than 66. Since in the Z table we read a, um, the probability less than a certain value, which is from the lower tail up to that cutoff point. So that's why um, uh, we have to convert that probability statement into its complement, right? Which is one minus the probability that X is less than 66. And then on the second part, which is this one, what do we do? We are standardizing. So we subtract the mean and uh, divide by the standard deviation. I'm not showing it here on the left-hand side, but I'm showing it on the right-hand side. This is the mean, the standard deviation. And when I did that on the left-hand side, I get a Z, right? While here, it's uh, values here. So it's 1 minus B less or equal than uh, P of Z less or equal than 1. We read in the table, we read this value, right? Which is... Uh, if you want to show it like that, sorry about this, um, it's that area, all that area, okay? So it's equal to 0 0.1587. Part B, a random sample of four women is selected. So here we have selected a, a sample, and um, the question now is what the probability that the sample mean height Okay, so we're talking about now another variable, which is X bar. Okay, what do we know about X bar? The sample size is four, right? So what do we know about that one? Uh, since the 
population has enormous distribution so even if the sample uh, size is small it doesn't matter because the population itself has enormous distribution so certainly when you draw a sample from that distribution the mean of this sample will be a variable that has a normal distribution and it has a standard deviation of sigma x bar which is the standard deviation of the population sigma divided by the sample size square root of the sample size so we get equal to one so now i can um, show the whole uh, the full notation for x bar okay so x bar is a mean uh, sorry, it's the sample mean that belongs to a distribution of X bar capital, right? Because this X bar, usually the small uh, letter represents a certain value. It belongs to a distribution that has a normal distribution. Mean is always equal to the population mean and standard deviation, which we just got, which is sigma X bar. All right. And now I can um, write the question in probability statement. P of x bar greater or equal than 66. As I uh, said in the introduction of these videos, that once you reach this point, right, then all the procedure is the same procedure that we did in the previous topic. So there's nothing new. That's why I'm going uh, quickly through these steps. And here I'm showing you also the standardizing procedure on the left hand side and right hand side of my inequality. Okay, it's not an equal. It's the inequality right i'm just underlining it so it's one minus p of z less than two and you read that in the z table and you get 2.28 percent okay now we're going to uh, finish that with part c in the next slide so what's different in this uh, in part c the only different difference is that now we are uh, selecting a sample of 100 women so that's a very large sample size and the question is what the priority that the mean of these 100 women uh, the mean uh, uh, height would be greater than 66 inches all right so uh, let's see what's our now new variable sample size is 100 which means now we have a new standard deviation the mean does not change because it's always equal to the mean of the population but the standard deviation of the uh, of of x bar now changes drastically now it's 0 0.2 right while in the previous part it was one so that's very very small standard deviation which means very high concentration around the mean and now the sample this sample mean coming from a sample of 100 belongs to another distribution right it has now a standard deviation of 0 0.2 okay completely different so i can write now the priority statement and i do exactly the same and you can see here let me just comment on that the priority that z is less or equal than 10 right so it's like you know if this is the z curve we're talking about a very very large value of z right because the z table shows you a values between minus 3.99 and plus 3.99 and here we're talking about 10 which means we are at the very very end of the tail which means we're talking about all that area and what do we know about that area it's equal to one right so that's why it's almost zero percent chance that we'll get a height that's greater than 66 if if a sample size is equal to 100 okay okay this problem is um, very similar to the previous one uh, with only one um, one uh, new aspect in the last part so i'm going to go through the first two parts uh, rather quickly and i strongly advise you that before you uh, watch all the video why don't you just read the questions and try to answer them yourself because if you understood uh, problem 915 then this should be easy for you the first two parts so here what do we have the variable here for us is um the length of that component right it's it's coming from a production process so it's not always exactly the same uh, value it, it varies and we call that x uh, 
okay and what do we know about x we are already given that it follows a normal distribution we know the mean we know the standard deviation so we can use that notation which is easier for for us so normal distribution mean is 117 and standard deviation of 5.2 this is our original x right so we're talking about each individual item here from the whole population and what about the question the question is what the predicted that x is greater than 120 again i will do exactly the same procedure i'm showing you here the standardizing of the right hand side parts we get this 0 0.58 we read it from the table which is this one and we get a value of 28.1 percent this is the probability of getting a part component length of greater than 120. now part b find the probability that if four subcomponents are randomly selected their mean length so is exceeds 120. so here we're talking about what we're talking about an x bar right we have a sample size of a four and what do we know about that because also this sample was drawn from a population of components that follows normal distribution that means the, the mean of the samples also is variable with normal distribution that has standard deviation of sigma of a square root of n right so um, sample size is four so we get 2.6 and now the x bar is a normal distribution variable with a mean of equal to the population mean and standard deviation of 2.6 and what about the question here we go p of x greater x bar greater than 170 i do exactly the same i'm showing you here the standardizing procedure which uh, then convert my priority statement into a z and that's it again i read that from the table and I get a final answer of 0 0.1251 okay so that was pretty the same as uh, 9.15 what's coming next would be a little bit different but not hard at all okay so read this question carefully okay find the probability that if four subcomponents are randomly selected all four have a length that exceed 120 centimeters so are we talking here about the sample mean no look this question can be a little bit tricky why that because some students when they read that we have selected four components they will simply jump to the conclusion that we're talking about an x bar but it's not because look at this read the question very very carefully we are asking about the priority that each one of these okay uh, to have a, a, a certain length um, that exceeds 120 we're not talking talking about their mean so we found in part a that p of x greater than 120 is 0 0.281 and here i'm going to use the multiplication rule it's a rule that you have learned way back during the term right so the probability that all four have a length of 120 is equal to p of x1 which is the first one times right the multiplication rule the probability that the second one also exceeds 120 the third one and the fourth one so what we do we multiply these four probabilities which are the same right okay and we get 0 0.00623 which is a very very small probability okay so what do we learn from that uh, this is only a, a, to remind you of this multiplication rule, which is a very important rule in probability. And remember that always read your questions very carefully, guys. Okay, so we'll move to another type of uh, problems.